Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Muslims around the world will soon be celebrating the blessed month of Ramadan as they prepare themselves physically and spiritually for a month of dedication and worship, one of which is the fasting during this month, daily from pre-dawn to sunset as they abstain from food, drink, and intimate relation. Fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam prescribed by Allah Azawajal, which comes as a revelation in the Noble Quran. All you who believe fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, so that you may learn self-restraint, become righteous. Meaning the essence of fasting is learning taqwa, which is more than just self-restraint. It is God consciousness, which endows the person, the muttaqi, with awareness of the presence of Allah in every moment of his or her life and to be careful of his and her duty toward him. Ramadan is a month of worship and the month of Qur'an as Muslims celebrate the first revelation of the Qur'an in this month by spending extra time reading the Qur'an, performing special prayers, and doing good deeds. Ramadan affords a believer an opportunity to cross-reference his entire life with the reading of the Qur'an and anyone who observes this practice during Ramadan has a better chance of graduating to a higher spiritual level. As Muslims, we do not fast because it lowers the blood sugar, the cholesterol, the blood pressure, or treats non-insulin diabetes. These are fringe benefits, one might realize, but the primary reason we fast in this month is because it was prescribed by God. And as Muslims, we submit and surrender to him and his commands, knowing Allah Azza who is all wise and free of all needs, would not prescribe anything that is not good for us and nor beyond our ability. Of course, as the Quran stipulates, Whoever among you is ill or on travel during them, then an equal number of days are to be made up afterwards. Fasting provides that intimate connection with God because it is the only act of worship that is not apparent to anyone except God. That is, when someone fasts, only Allah knows it. Certainly, there is only one reason why a believer will put himself or herself through this physical exercise, and that is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is an annual institution containing all attributes for human excellence, kamal. It is a training for the body and soul, a renewal of life, encouraging the spirit of sharing and giving. Beyond the physical, there are many spiritual benefits of fasting, such as Number one, develop self-worth, self-strength, self-rebuilding, self-discipline, and self-control, all of which are results of taqwa. Number two, behavior modification. Human life is an embodiment of acquired habits. It is possible for a fasting person to control or change his or her habits. For a fasting person who controls the consumption of food and drink, it will be undoubtedly easy to control other habits. If you can control your tongue, your hands, and all other parts of your body, it will be easy for you to apply the same training for the rest of the year as long as the will is still there. Number three. Patience. Fasting helps in conditioning the heart and soul on the virtues of patience and tenacity in the face of adversity. 
Patience is the pinnacle of self-mastery, discipline, and spiritual agility. Patience is to turn the phrase, I can't, into I can. If a believer can exercise patience and forsake gourmet food and drink, as well as pleasure of marital relation and gratification of other normal appetites for a whole month, he can exercise patience in virtually everything in life. Number four, socially, fasting is an expression of solidarity with the poor, the family, and the whole society. This is a period in which the rich have a first-hand experience of what it is like to be hungry and the pains that destitutes suffer in normal living condition. The process of disciplining as a result of fasting instills the virtue of mercy, rahmah, which is very important in terms of social well-being and creation of harmony. Allah bestows His mercy upon those who themselves are merciful to others. Number five, family ties. Fasting strengthens family ties, especially where the family is an endangered institution, like in the Western society. It helps the family come together to break their fast, iftar, and pre-dawn meal at least twice a day for a month. Fasting enhances and energizes friendship. Number six, additional wisdom. To a Muslim, fasting not only means abstaining from food and drink, but also refraining from all vices and wrongdoings committed by us consciously or unconsciously. For it is believed that if one vol volunteers to refrain from lawful food, foods and sex, they will be in a better position to avoid unlawful things during the rest of the year. Number seven, impact of fasting in Ramadan on human nafs and soul. Firstly, fasting weakens your nafs. Nafs al-ammar is the component of an individual that compels him towards his desires. Abstinence in Ramadan weakens this nafs, hence its ability to invite the individual toward wrongdoing and sin. In return, it strengthens his soul, which is the vehicle through which an individual is inclined toward good deeds, hence toward developing a stronger relationship with Allah Ta'ala. This is why you feel that heightened sense of closeness to Allah during Ramadan. In wanting to do good, your soul no longer must fight your nafs as it is empowered by the fasting, hence the increased willingness to do good deeds. It brings you closer to your thoughts and emotions. Some people feel an overarching sense of calm and serenity during Ramadan. Quite often, even though the physical hunger is felt, we are calmed down by an overbearing sense of peace. These emotions are the direct impact of a close connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This calmness also allows us to be better attuned to our own thoughts and emotions. It also relieves a person of worldly desires. Hence, it is quite often the case that individuals refrain from all things that invite them towards sin during their fast. The natural response is that if one is making an effort to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is best not to impair that effort by engaging in activities that breed wrongdoing and sin. We try to refrain from anger and from expressing our basic instincts during Ramadan for this very reason. Back to the purpose of fasting, which is to gain taqwa, to learn self-restraint and become God-conscious. How to attain taqwa? 
by strengthening the connection with Allah and applying his moral instructions in our daily lives and in our dealings with others. These are simple commands, but are sometimes hard to practice. Being humans, we give in to different temptations that weaken our resolve to practice these commands or instructions. We all know the harmful effects of loose tongue, jealousy, envy, self-promotion, self-interest, and backbiting. How to avoid these? How to build and strengthen one's character? By sincere effort to reflect upon Allah's commands and practice them. What could be a better month than Ramadan for achieving this? Let us make a decision with all our hearts to embed these values in our lives. Why wait for tomorrow that may never come? Here are a few examples of the important Quranic teachings and reminders we should focus on and practice in this month so we can continue the months that follow. فَلَا تَتَّبَعُ الْحَوَى Hence, do not follow the vain desires of your heart. وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَقْتَبْ Do not spy on one another and neither allow yourself to speak ill of one another behind your backs. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُغُودِ O you who believe, fulfill your obligations, your promises. وَلَا تَكْتُمُ الشَّهَادَةِ And do not conceal evidence and testimony. وَقُولُوا غَوْلًا سَدِيدًا And say a word directed to the right, to the truth. وَاجْتَنِبُوا غَوْلَ الزُّورِ And avoid every word that is untrue. وَإِذَا غُلْتُمْ فَعَدَلُوا Whenever you speak, speak justly. وَإِذَا سَمَعُوا اللَّغْبَ عَرَدُوا عَنْهَا When they, believers, hear vain and idle talk, they turn away from it. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاهِشْ مَا ذَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَتَنَا And do not commit any shameful deeds, whether in open or in secret. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَغُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? وَلَا تَلْمَزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْغَابِ Neither defame one another nor insult one another by nicknames or calling names. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اجْتَنَبُوا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الذن. O you who believe, Avoid suspicion as much as possible. وَلَكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمَلُوا And for all there are ranks for what they have done. The month of Ramadan is a month in which the mercy and blessing of Allah Ta'ala descends upon us continuously. It is the month that the believers await with eagerness during Ramadan, the believers seek Allah's forgiveness and protection from hellfire. This is the month for renewing our commitment and reestablishing our relationship with our Creator. The rewards for good deeds are multiplied during Ramadan. In conclusion, Ramadan is a month of reflection a month of spiritual rejuvenation, a month one strengthens one's humanity as he stays away from his animal instincts and sins and draws near to spirituality because it is this spirituality and God consciousness, taqwa, that leads one to his humanity and excellence. Therefore, this is the month when you when, it, when one becomes more human and godlier. In such an atmosphere and spirit, without a doubt, God's words will have deeper impact. One's prayers and acts of worship become livelier. 
That is the essence of Ramadan. And if one does not reach such a state, he must try his best with the help of this blessed month. This is the month in which Allah's gates of mercy and forgiveness are wide open. That is, with the actions of this month, one prepares himself for God's forgiveness. Hence, we must do our best to take advantage of this month as, as much as possible. We do not want to be fasting only through our mouths, but also through our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our thoughts, our tongue, our hands, and through the rest of our body. So the entire physical and mental being is fasting. So we do not go near anything that displeases Allah. Hence, feel closer to Him. At the end of the day, the goal of all acts of worship, including fasting, is to gain that God consciousness and keeping one's duty toward God. In this Ramadan, let's reflect, let's re-examine our understanding of why we do these rituals. Ask your son, your daughter, your spouse, your family member, why is he or she fasting and praying? What is the reason? Perhaps you're going to hear different answers. And of course, at the end, you have to provide the real answer. Alhamdulillah, we do not have a problem in how to's. We all know how to pray or how to fast. Rather, need to work on why we pray and fast. Sometimes Google does not provide the real answers. We need to make sure all of us and our family members know the reason, which is the most important part. May Allah accept all your fasting, prayers, and good deeds in this blessed month. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.